Welcome to post game on the pitch. I'm Oz Vidamara era with me, John Marshall, Stephen Agan. Hold on, and, hold on, and, hold on. And, and what the hell do you think you're doing? We're, ta- we're doing post game on the pitch. <sighs> Welcome to post game on the pitch. My name is Jackson Feltz. We have John Marshall, Stephen Egan, Maz Vida Mare Ire. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so the reason why Maz is starting this thing off uh, is because I am happy to pass the torch to you guys. Uh, I hosted post game on the pitch before last season uh, for the first season. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, uh, I will congrats, be. Congrats, congrats. Congrats, Jackson. Congrats, Jackson. Thanks, guys. Uh, I am the new host of the Sounders FC pregame and postgame show on Sports Radio 950 KJR, your new home for Sounders FC soccer. Uh, so you'll be able to listen to me uh, at the end of the match if you're driving home, whatever, uh, right there on 950 AM. And that means I can't be on this pitch, uh, which is why, guys, uh, this is all you guys now. Uh, so good luck with it. Uh, but. In all seriousness, let's get down to business here. Uh, there was a game played on here tonight. That's why we're doing this. 4 nothing for Seattle over Santa Tecla FC. The Sounders are on to the CONCACAF Champions League quarterfinals with a win. How about that second half? Halftime, the score was 0-0. Sounders score four. Count them four goals in the second half. Smetzer makes the substitution. He brings on Ikram and some dividends for you, Steven. Definitely. Uh, you listen to the Santa Tecla coach talk about it, and he'll have you think that his players gave up a goal on 48 minutes and that that was the difference in the tie. The reality is the Sounders came out a different team in the second period than they have been at all at any time in this Champions League series with Santa Tecla. They turned it on, and they blew by their visitors 4-0 in that second period. Uh, it was not just the one goal. It was a complete 45-minute performance. John, what did they do? Oh. Bringing on Ikram uh, at halftime and switching to a 4-4-2 and more of a diamond formation uh, it, it gave them two guys up front with Dempsey and, and Bruin who were, were able to be more dangerous up top. Uh, Ikram was able to make fantastic passes, just open the field up, make good cuts into space, into the open space, get behind defenders, uh, and really open the game for Seattle in that second half and led to the first early goal and just continued from there. And it was the- Type of passes I can was making. Yes. Maz, I mean, the, it was it was the intelligence on the goal by that Dempsey hit hit Ladero with the header. I mean, the pass that he makes to Dempsey, it's it's the intelligence that Eichner was making these passes with. That's what's so impressive, and that's what they've been talking about, you know, since he got here. Was we believe how smart of a guy this is, and Eichner easily showed why you know he is the smart guy they brought in. And we just talked to him in the post game in the media scrum there. You're right about the type of passes. Soccer, the beautiful game when it's played simply, is absolutely beautiful. The yeah. give and go, the passes to space, and Ikram running on to space. I think it's something we're really going to see this yeah. this year with the Sounders because yeah. his ability to give to Dempsey and Ladero and then to space was going to create some spaces. I just want to add on to that, Mazvita. Coach Schmetzer talked about it after the game and mentioned that uh, what what Ikram provides is that he's another goal dangerous player. And I think that's exactly what Sounders were missing, honestly, down the tail end of last year. I think it's what they need uh, to compete with the top end teams in this league and in Champions League. And uh, to be honest, Wolf Ikram has the ability to pass the ball. He has the ability to shoot the ball. He has the ability to cross the ball. He combines well with Clint Dempsey and Nico Ladero. It's just what you're saying. It's just what they need. They need a third guy in that attack who can provide. It's a complete package. Is yeah. it? I mean, he really is in so many dimensions. Uh, there's a is, Maz. I wanted to talk to you about something we were just talking about coming out at Spencer's press conference, and that's and that's the when the formation change happened and they brought on Ikram, took Alfaro off. They put Gustav Svensson into that back four, and that's interesting because that shows the confidence of Brian Schmetzer to you know. And we all know Gustav Svensson's versatility, but also in the sense of he said the exact quote was uh, was that he believed that Gustav can do could do exactly what he was doing in the midfield in the back four. That's absolutely right, and we did we did talk about that. And what he's saying is that ability to play defense and be creative, what Gustav was doing in the front, you can do that in the back. So when you've got that confidence, then you can bring an attacking player in that spot. You push higher. You, I, you know, I just want to toss out there. there. I think that was an interesting comment from Schmetzer. I haven't heard uh, very frequently a coach say that a center defensive midfielder can accomplish what he's doing there at center back. Can you... As a, as a former coach yourself, Masvida, and as a former college player, how many times have you, have you even heard of a situation like this? 
I mean, I, I haven't. And, and I think what it, what it speaks to is the depth, and there's no drop off when you bring in some of these players. Yeah. And I, I think we're going to see Smetzel really tinker with some things here with this team because he's got confidence now. Yeah. He's got some veterans, and I think that he can kind of uh, really go out there and mix some potions and see what he can do and have his team set the tone on the pitch. Well, and they talked about this too at the media day presser when uh, with Kim. Uh, being announced as well that Kim Hee Hee Kim Hee Hee yep. that team is looking to add depth everywhere and it's not about getting a, you know, a guy that can be a backup it's a guy, a guy who's going to be a starter and can rotate into the lineup as needed I mean there's going to be a lot of games played this year and and Ikram is one of those guys he, he, Kim Hee Hee is going to be one of those guys as well once he uh, gets on the field uh, I think it just shows just how deep this team is going to be this season glad you touched on that, John. It's something that the Sounders brought up in their media day press yeah. conference yesterday, Garth Lagerwey specifically. Uh, what this new discretionary targeted allocation money that we have in Major League Soccer is going to do in 2018, there, there isn't going to be a group of 11 players who are the clear starters as we've seen for probably 20 years in MLS. Yeah. It's 18 guys. It's and 24 guys. Sent to Tecla coach mentioned it in the post game, right? Yeah. He said, you know what, when you look at their roster and our roster, they've got the money they're spending, $2 million, the people coming off the bench, we just cannot compete with that. And that's exactly what he said. Well, Santa Tecla is now in the past, and Guadalajara is now in the future. Wednesday, the Sounders are back here. That's CONCACAF, though. There is another match here taking place on Sunday. That's LAFC. Uh, you can listen to that match on the new home of Sounders FC Sports Radio KJR. <laughs> I, I, I have to plug that. Pre-game starts at 1.30. We'll take the rights to on the pitch. <laughs> I hand the proverbial torch over. <laughs> Guys, uh, good luck with post game on the pitch this year. Have some fun, and uh, I'll be later. Peace. Thank you. you. Congrats on the promotion. Congratulations, so you've been you, the guy. More to come, and again, thank you for being there. Guys, we'll be back on Sunday. Back we'll Sunday. see you Sunday. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks.